What is Jimmy Hoppa's biggest pet peeve about you? Yeah. Had to, it's only fair. It's only fair. I have no idea, because he doesn't tell me. He just, everything I do is great. That, you know, maybe yeah. that's the answer. Maybe that's what he's gonna say. That could be his answer. Okay. All right, Jimmy, what you got? Ready? Yeah. Oh, can I just savor that moment, a moment that I'm going to keep alive for as long as I can. You know, we've had a lot of fun over the past week playing the not-so-newlywed game. We were in the hot seat last week, Todd and Jacqueline Carly yesterday. What oh. does she use for hair products? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, wow. That look? That's, that look? Why would you ask that? Uh, listen, Todd and I know by now what to say and what not to say. <laughs> and if you want to join that club, perhaps you'll want to pay very close attention to what these guys have to say. This is David Bullitt, a divorce attorney, and this is his wife, Julie Bullitt, a family counselor, a true match made in... Made somewhere. Made somewhere. I'm, not sure. I'm not sure where. So, so, so David, I have to ask you, do you know where they, they were coming from with those... Uh, Answers, you know. Uh, I'm begging you to think this answer over very carefully. I mean, Jimmy was right. He, he does not have a pet peeve. Well, well you're you're very perfect, Lisa. Thank so you. It is it is hard to find a flaw. So I think he, you know, caution, he was just being off. There's an old saying: caution is the better part of valor. Right? So, so and, and caution is the better. So yes, I hadn't heard that one. Yes, I, I substituted awesome. a word. As I, you like know. Yeah, yeah. I like it. Yeah, yeah. That would be the reason they have brought this book, the five. Core, make sure I get it. Five core conversations for couples. Yes. They yeah. authored this book, and, and it's fantastic. Well, thank you. Thank you. The thank topics you. that you have in there are not some that you might bring up at the dinner table, but they are necessary for conversation. That is 100% true. Yes. So. Some, some really, you know, more easily talked about things and then some more difficult things. Right. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so we, you're here to talk specifically yes. Valentine's about Valentine's Day. Day. Yes, yes, we are. Nice. Yes, we are. I mean, it's good stuff for all year. It well, is. that's why we're here. Right. Because we really feel that... Yeah, so so th this came up because of what I see in my in my practice. I've been a divorce, a divorce lawyer right. for 35 years. Right. And, and briefly, you know, people always ask you, what's the biggest reason that people get divorced? You know, why, what's the, if you could pick one? And, you know, there's lots of individual incidents that might occur, right? Somebody cheats, a death in the family, someone's sick, whatever. There's all sorts of those one-offs. But the reality is that the real reason that people come apart more and more and more is a failure to stay connected. Mm -hmm. And so Valentine's Day, we connect, right? You right. know, mm -hmm. candy and flowers and dinners out. Mm -hmm. But what about the rest of the year? Yeah. And, and that's the part that folks tend to forget about. Yeah. Yeah. And that's really our message with this book and what we do. We talk about relationships and how to keep them alive and how to keep them going, not just on Valentine's Day, which is a great day to stop and have a great celebration or, you know, some chocolate or flowers, but really how to keep your relationship alive all through the year. And we've actually come up come up with a very simple strategy that we would love to share with people on three things that they can do mm -hmm. to keep their relationship going all year long. And, <laughs> and one of them is arguing? Uh, well, well, that's, that's uh, part of communicating okay. sometimes, to be honest with you. Right, okay. It is. Right. There's yes. nothing wrong with that. There's yeah. nothing wrong with that. So long as you, so long as you, you know you gotta, you, you're going to have to find a way to find that compromise. Mm -hmm. but, but what Julie's talking about yeah. is communicating, mm -hmm. connecting, and maintaining consistency. And if you re remember those old those old reel to reel tapes that we used to play. I know you I know you're like me we yeah, had the cassette we, we, tapes, yeah, yeah, right? Let right. me saw the tape go. If you run that through day to day to day, am I communicating? Am I connecting? Am I doing it consistently? Then I guarantee you that not only your relationship with your with your work partner, right. but your home partner and and the and and all your other relationships will be improved and the better for it. Well, what if you find yourself rewinding that tape to here's what she's not doing, here's here's what she's not saying. What what do you do then? How do you correct what you're rewinding? Well, the, you know when we talk about communication, there are 
you know, really good ways to communicate and not such good ways. And so when you communicate with somebody, it's really important that you use I statements instead right. of you statements. Okay. So if you have an issue with somebody, it would be much better to say, I'm feeling upset that you didn't, you know, call me and let me know that you were late versus like, why are you late? You or, never called. You, you didn't never, call, right. you know, so start the sentence with an I instead of a you. Uh -huh. And then you put your feelings into it first, which diffuses a little bit of the situation because when you start blaming, people shut down. Right. Mm -hmm. you know, also, also keep in mind, and we're all, we're all human beings, right? We have ups and downs during the course of a day. But sometimes it's not what you say, but it's A, when you say it, and B, how you say it. I mean, Julie's not a morning person. It's not a good time for me mm -hmm. to hop up and start having a real discussion about something serious. Yes. She's pulling the blanket over her head, right? You know, and so I know if we got something we got to talk about, it's not going to happen before she's out of bed, clothes on, coffee yes. in coffee. Hand. Yeah, <laughs> yes. it's going to happen. Yes, and he's terrible at night. I want to talk about things Late we get in night. bed. And he <laughs> will not want, he'll be like, I'm shutting down for the night. Yeah. So for us, we really have to make an effort to talk during the day, you know, like after 11, but before 8, you know, kind <laughs> right. of thing. We have a window. Yeah. So if we have something to talk about, whether it's, you know, important or not, it, it, it needs to be done during the day. Hmm. And we know that about each other. So yeah. it's tone and timing when yes. you communicate. Very important. And if you want to read everything that David and Julie Bullitt have to say about the core conversations for a couple, you can pick up their book. We have a, a link on our website. Yeah, I think you'll also find a page about color coordinating whenever you step out as a couple. Yes. Yeah, can, yes. We, can we just, uh, <laughs> take, a can we just take a look at these shoes? We have our Valentine's shoes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Got we got these um, several years ago. And we, we wear them once right. a year for Valentine's Day. Well, we wear them during the weekend. We'll be wearing them all weekend long. Yeah, yeah. but really, we That's like fun. to celebrate yeah. Valentine's Day with something fun. So you and Carol will be wearing matching shoes on Monday. Yeah. Matching shoes, matching socks, matching sure. whatever. Whatever. It's all good. Thank you so much. And Thank you all for having us again. Thank you. So great. good to see you.